This is Katie Pertit from katiepertitdesigns.com and today I want to talk to you a little bit about using channels for some creative photo blending in Photoshop Creative Cloud. I know that this doesn't work in Elements but it still might inspire you quite a bit and if you're using Photoshop hopefully you can follow along and be inspired to find some new creative techniques. In the text below is a link to download the free layer template I'm going to be using in this example. So let me start by opening that template. I'm going to go back here to my crop template. And here I've got the template. It's got all the different layers of the elements and down at the bottom is a painted version of one of my new vintage artistry papers. I'm going to click on that layer so that I'm bringing my photo in above that layer. I'm going to go and find my photo. And I want to use this one. And I'm going to click it and drag it into the back of my page. Grab the corner and drag. Now I could just go and multiply and blend it or clip it to a painted photo mask. But instead, I want to show you a way to use it with channels. So I'm going to do a select all image. I always use key command, so I get, I forget. Let's see, command A, select all. And then I'm going to go to edit and copy. And then I'm going to go over here to my channels. You see you've got layers, paths, channels, properties, adjustments, and these can all be set in your windows of what you're going to see. So your setup might be a little bit different than mine. And in channels, you've got RGB, which is the composite red, green, and blue channels. And then you can also select just the red, just the green, and just the blue. But what we're going to do now is select, uh, create a new channel, and I'm going to edit and paste, pasting in the photo that I had just copied. Now, image adjust levels is the next step to take. And here, I want to add a little bit more contrast to the photo. So I'm going to bump up the whites and bring the blacks in a little bit, pump it up a little bit more. And then I'm going to image, oh boy, I wish I could just use key commands all the time. Okay, select and inverse. And we're gonna to go to inverse, command, inverse. Command I will inverse it. Then holding down the command key and hovering over the alpha channel, I'm going to command click. That is going to make everything that's white an active selection. That's why I inversed it, because otherwise the main images I would get would be the opposite. Okay, so with that selected, all I'm going to do now is go up and click on my RGB so I can see the full image. I'm going to go back to my layers, make sure I'm on the layer with the photo, and I'm going to edit copy, command C. Turn off the visibility on this layer, edit, command, V, paste, and there you can see I've got a much lighter version. And I can multiply it. Now if I had just done the full photo and multiplied it, it looked like this. And by using the channels, it's creating the photo in a transparency. So, <clears throat> it just adds more flexibility to your photo. You could take this paper, painted paper mask, and I'm command clicking on it. You see the, the dotted line around the cursor. And I'm going to go to um, image, layer, layer, um, layer mask, and let's just reveal the selection. There, now you've gotten an even more dreamy kind of effect with it. 
Maybe that's not what you want. Do a command I and see what the reverse of that selection gives you. And maybe that'll work better with your photos. But a number of different possibilities with this. Now another little um, trick, and that might get you thinking more about things you can do with channels, is I'm gonna open this flower photo. If you follow me on social media, you know I have a minor flower obsession. So I'm gonna select the um, selection tool here, click in the white, grab, hold down shift and grab this little bit of white too. I'm going to um, shift command I and inverse my selection. I'm going to command C and copy my selection. I'm going to go to channels again. I'm going to create a new channel. You can see the dotted lines are still there for the active selection. And that helps that when I do a command V, it pastes it right into position. And now I want to do um, levels, keeping that in active selection. I'm going to adjust my levels again a little bit here. And now I'm going to Command I, inverse my selection, hold down the Command key, hover over that layer. You know what? I should probably make these much larger. Let's go to my panel options. Let's go big so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Sorry about that. Okay. Command and click on that alpha channel. And that is selecting the light colors you see here in the mask. Go back to my RGB layer click to the Layers tab, and Command C, or Image, or Edit Copy. And create a new layer, turn off that layer, and Command V, and Paste. And you see you have a nice, dreamy, transparent, kind of veiny um, image here of the flower that can create a lot more artistic effects than if you had just, let's go back here and you'll see the difference. We'll go to our flower and we'll select the white, we'll inverse it and just drag it over by holding down the command key and dragging. So you can see you can either bring it over like this and that's not using channels or anything, just extracting the image which of course is much easier because I did shoot it on a white background. Um, and then, or you can use the channel method and have something more transparent. It can be more artistic, you can get a lot more creative um, by quickly creating a transparency of your photo. So it's just a, a little trick. There's lots that can be done with channels. We can explore that more. I know it's um, frustrating for Photoshop Element folks, but um, maybe you can figure out some workarounds based on these tips and tricks. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow along with more tips, tricks, and free templates and tutorials to come. Thanks again, and I'll see you at katiepartitdesigns.com.